Ask me who I am. Ask me king. Go ahead, ask me. I am Anjo Daka, the son of Anjobu, born in America as Eric Stevens, and nicknamed Killmonger. I am heir to the African throne of Wakanda, but yet my father was betrayed by his own brother, and I was left to suffer oppression in the wilderness of North America. The trials and tribulations, and injustices, and persecution, that me and my people experienced at the hands of white people, made my heart fill with hate. But what I hated even more is that the people of Wakanda, had the ability to help their African brothers and sisters around the world, but yet they choose to do nothing. I grew to only want revenge. Revenge on white people. Revenge on the Africans. My plan was to take my rightful place on the throne, and exact my revenge by going out to cause chaos and anarchy, and colonize the world. My plan was to, bang on that wicked ass beast daily, and cause a holy war. This is why the mask that I wore in the Black Panther movie, resembled the head of Baphomet the deity purportedly worshipped by the holy warriors during the time of the crusades, called the, Knights Templar. You see, hate breeds hate, I am a product of my environment. This is why in the Black Panther movie, when the CIA agent Everett Ross heard of my plan to colonize the rest of the world, he said, that I was doing exactly, what I was trained to do. See, I know how colonizers think, because they trained me how to think. The paradox is, in my fight for liberation, I was still a product of my enslavement, doing exactly what the white men programmed me to do. Mike and Johnson, Gavin Eugene Long, Christopher Dorner. And since my actions were exactly what the white man expected, I did not stop to think that perhaps they have already planned a contingency plan for my anticipated set of actions. See, the Black Panther movie is symbolic. What Killmonger represents is the ugly truth. The truth that makes you uncomfortable, the truth you do not want to hear, in many ways. My story is similar to the African king Shaka Zulu, who was a child who was heir to the Zulu throne, but he was cast out of the kingdom with his mother to suffer in the wilderness, without receiving help from many of the neighboring tribes. Shaka Zulu grew up with hate in his heart, and when he finally took the Zulu throne, he took out his revenge on all the people and tribes who did not help him when he was a child. Through death war, and intimidation, Shaka Zulu conquered many of the neighboring tribes, and unified them all under the banner of Zulu. However, when the white man came to South Africa, it was Shaka Zulu who sold out his land, and his people, to the white man. So, is Shaka Zulu really a hero? See, it was corrupt African leaders, who sold out their own land and people, for their own selfish gain, which led to the colonization of Africa. That is the ugly truth you do not want to hear. Similar circumstances exist for the cause of slavery. The ugly truth about slavery, is that Africans sold their own brothers and sisters into slavery. Any scholarly research into the causes of slavery will tell you that there were four kinds of people who were sold into slavery. Criminals or debtors, prisoners of war, house servants, and free people captured during raids by rival tribes and European gangs. In every case, there were African people selling their African brothers and sisters into slavery. In the case of criminals and debtors, and house servants, these were usually members of the same tribe, who were selling their own tribal brother and sister into slavery. In the case where members of different tribes sold each other into slavery, when you do research on the tribes, you will find that many of the neighboring West African tribes, can tell you exactly how they are all related, and, at what point in time they branched off to become a separate tribe. So they knew they were selling their own family into slavery, but they cared more about selfish gain. That is the ugly truth you do not want to hear. But, you would rather, maintain the lie, as they say in the Black Panther movie. Also, in the Black Panther movie, the priest Zuri was the one who snitched on Killmonger's father which got him killed, and Zuri went on to become a powerful high priest in the tribe. The same thing is true for the high priests of many West African traditional religions during the time of slavery. These high priests were advising the chief to sell various people into slavery. So if you reject the religion of Christianity because of its involvement in slavery, or if you reject the religion of Islam because of its involvement in slavery, then you should also reject the West African religion of Ifa, because those Babalawe priests, were advising the chief to sell your ancestor into slavery too. 
I know, I know, some truths are too much to bear. You want to maintain the light. But the reality is that the suffering, brutality, and cruelty, that Africans have faced at the hands of white people through slavery and colonization, was facilitated by our own African family members for their own corrupt selfish greed. So these hellish conditions that we have experienced are really, a monster of our own making, as is stated in the Black Panther movie. Lastly, if you are a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade who is alive today, then your ancestor did not jump from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage, because if they had jumped from the ships and killed themselves, then you would not be alive today. So do you want to deal with the truth, or do you want to, maintain the lie?